And we're back. Another episode of Fight Junkies. I got a friend. Just came in from California. I'm super excited. He's a content creator. He's a huge MMA fan. I'd say an MMA guru. Knows everybody in the game. Uh, I look up to him. He's doing some amazing things in this, this genre of the fight world. I got Chris Martinez in the studio today. Hey, man. How are you, brother? I'm very good. Thanks so much. That, that was an incredible intro, man. Thank I you. try. You know, whenever it's like scripted and I think, I always like, fuck it up. <laughs> I used to like come in here and they know like when I, my first couple shows, because I was never, I never sought podcasting out, you know, it wasn't a thing for me. And then it kind of fell in my lap. So I was nervous. And being in the military, we, you know, piss poor planning is, you know, uh, piss poor performance. So I'm always like, let's prep. And I'm printing out shit and bringing in binders and hundreds of questions. And it was just, I was just fumbling it. So now I'm just well relaxed. You, you fooled me, man. I'm, I'm from L.A. I've worked on, you know, some network shows. But your facility out here is, you know, top notch. And the crew guys are awesome. So I hear Vegas is going to be like the new Hollywood spot. And uh, sounds good to me. I'm, I'm living in the high desert now, so it took me like two hours to jam out here. And uh, can't wait to you know, see what you're all about over here. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, it means a lot to have somebody of you know, your caliber follow the content uh, with the circle that you have and then take the time out of your, you and your, your wife's day to, like, you know, to drive over to a different state to sit down. Um, it just shows consistency, hard work, and being, you know, uh, a good person pays off sometimes, man. I'm super excited to have you in. So what's going on with you? You, uh, I don't even know where to start. I, if, if people go to your profile, they're going to wonder how you don't have 50 million followers wow. because you're just so engulfed in mixed martial arts with the people. And I see you with Dana and Tito Ortiz and Rampage and Dominic Cruz. And I mean, you, you name it, you're with them. How... How did you get into this um, MMA world? Like, was it something you were just a fan back in? Yeah, so uh, I grew up watching uh, Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers and Batman. So, you know, uh, kind of fandom it has always been a part of what I've been into and drawing. And eventually I started playing with a camera. And uh, this was before there was a YouTube, before there was cell phone cameras at all. Um, and that eventually led to me uh, meeting a guy who ran a, a video production company shooting King of the Cage uh, MMA pay-per-view events. So this was on uh, Indian casino grounds, and it was outdoor fights and wild crowds, you know, beer everywhere, blood everywhere. But it was also where uh, guys like Uriah Faber and Diego Sanchez kind of started. Uh, Rampage was also there. So... Uh, I got my feet wet there, and that led to me shooting music videos, doing a bunch of things, but then probably about 15 years later, I, I meet Tito Ortiz, and it kind of got me back into this this world and uh, been kind of rolling ever since. So you, I think we all start as a fan, but like your expertise, or did you have a, like an avenue you wanted to do? Did you want to be on the content side, behind the camera? Uh, and I say that because during COVID, obviously a lot of us were suffering. I decided to use the military benefits I had and go back to school because they'll pay a cost of living allowance. And I got kids, so I said, I need to make some income, even if the world shut down. So I went to the Academy of Arts or uh, the San Francisco Film School. Wow. And uh, it was great to like see a whole new world. You know, it's like I'm a, I'm a Prince Hall Freemason. Um, been a Mason a long time. And I say that because before I was a Mason, I never saw anything about anything Masonic ever. Right. And then once you become a frat brother, like now I see it everywhere. The same goes for like mixed martial arts and the camera and the content. If you're not looking for it, you're never going to see it. So you, I see you with cameras, some awesome equipment. Right. So that's, were you doing that? Like, were you into editing? Did you have a camera as a kid? And then it just kind of unfolded into that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I my dad had a VHS camera, and that's where I started. So then you're putting together two uh, VCRs, and you're learning how to basically play on one, record on another. That's your first base of editing, you know. Then a computer comes in. And this was also when all these things were new uh, technology for consumers. You know, you couldn't make a movie by yourself you know in the 80s um but this is now the 2000s and things were changing so when i was working for broadcast uh you know that's still a, a different level of the game these are big cameras big trucks coming out 
So I still felt a little removed, but as YouTube started changing things and changing the environment, um, then UFC started doing embedded. Then I started seeing these young guys, you know, just running around with Connor with a camera. And I was like, hold on, that looks kind of cool too, you know? And I had done music videos already. So that was kind of like running its course, you know? And, uh, and, and yeah, I, I saw that Tito was promoting his car business in Fontana which wasn't far from me in Upland. So I reached out, sent an email, um, and didn't hear anything back. And I had actually taken a job at, at FedEx, kind of like what you were saying, you got to do what, what's right for your family at the time. So I was like, you know, in between these video gigs, let me, let me uh, load a forklift, you know, you know drive a forklift at 2 a.m. for a while. And, and that was pretty cool because it wasn't creative. It wasn't demanding on me to, like, find my next thing. And... You know, it was like just, just clock in your hours and go home and life's chill, you know. And then I get a call from, from Tito Ortiz, the, you know, the, the bad boy himself. And uh, he says, come on down, uh, let's talk. And had this meeting, and there's Tito at the end of the table, you know. He had a couple people in there he was meeting with, and he wasn't giving everyone much, you know. But uh, I, I saw everyone's tactic and how they were trying to, like, approach him and I was like dude I'm not any of that you know so I just straight up told him I'm not a car guy I'm not a big money guy who's gonna come you know give you money for a deal to do something and I said but I make badass videos <laughs> and I'm that guy you know yeah. so he 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 was on his phone and then he looked up you know so eventually it transitioned from just his car business to hey I'm gonna do another fight you know would you like to document my fight and it, you know, we never kind of stopped rolling that's super cool authenticity man and i see so many podcasts and all these people and they're talking about being authentic and and all this shit they're so full of shit and i, I can see it on their face but people recognize real um that is so cool i mean it only takes one thing to just set you off on this path and i see that now with fight junkies uh, one call from you know, the general Orlando, I was in California. I got the call and that was it. We, we, four days later, I was signing a lease. Wow. I don't fuck around. I drove here overnight. Remember that snowstorm that hit in March? Yeah. Yeah. I, that was a I, big deal. I drove through that. Oh my God. In a Camry. And it's like, got stuck. Yeah. I was like, I'm going, you know, but I, I was like, why? I'm not going to wait. What if somebody else snatches this opportunity up? Which sounds like what you did. Like, hey, look, I'm here, man. I'm not. I'm not claiming to be there, but I make some fire videos. Yeah. So you started working with Tito. How, can you? I mean, even for me, I'm a fan. Can you talk about how that is? Like, we don't. We we see the content, but we don't really get to. Are you guys in there being real quiet? You're kind of like not trying to be seen, and you're just like, or, or like, are you actually like breaking bread with these guys right. and chilling? Like, yeah. What's well, that like? I'm, you know, I'm like a bigger dude, so it's hard for me to like completely <laughs> disappear in a room. Uh, so I, I roll with it, you know, and, and, uh, of course I let people do their thing, but I, I'm into like character and storytelling. So I'm also trying to pull these parts of these people out as we're filming to kind of build a bigger world. You know, it's cool to shoot people like in slow motion and put cool music to it, you know, and put it on Instagram. But like, if they're not talking about their life, their, their, you know, how they grew up or their kids, or then it, it's pretty like superficial. You're peeling the onion a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then of course, like he, Tito's camp was like 18 weeks for Alberto Del Rio. Damn. So, uh, I was with him like two or three times a week. So of course you're going to build a rapport and, you know, you kind of become their like confidant because other reporters are from other, you know, networks and they have their uh narrative that they're pushing so they kind of only trust you in a certain way with you know the weight cut with the training with you know the vulner the vulnerability of telling their story so that that is kind of like where you you gotta massage the relationship and you know make sure you're, you're on good uh fertile ground for like what you're trying to get i'm glad that you do what you do and that you what I mean by that is that you're in that that world of behind the scenes, and I'm I'm going to tell you something now that I've been waiting to tell you, um, which is why I'm glad we're we're building a friendship and connecting now because I want to ask you after this like 
show to come back when I have Will Harris on. Yeah. yeah. Will's, Will's a friend of mine. I talked to him a couple times throughout my journey, and uh, he's overseas now doing his thing. But he basically gave me that advice that, that he lived out in the last year or two, which is you got to build your own vehicle that can then take you places, you know, and that's what he did with Anatomy of a Fighter. You know, if he was just one of Dana's camera guys, you know, that, that plateaus at a certain level. Yeah, you gotta but do. But because he made his own thing, he's now in Dubai, you know, doing cricket or other fighting, I don't know what, but I'm sure they're gonna take care of him because they seen his, you know, he's American stardom connection here, you know. I would love to have you guys on. And I say that in a, almost in a selfish way too, because I think you could help me. <laughs> you oh, know, I'd love to man. carry the Anything carry the need, conversation. Man, I'm, here. I'm here anytime. Because I, I and I think that in turn, all of us together would just be a dope show. Um, of course. I spoke to him, and his reply was, "Because you had the balls to send me a video and ask me to come on your show. Next time in, I'm in Vegas, I'll come on your show." Oh yeah. So Will Harris, I look forward to it. If you guys don't know, it. Will is who. <laughs> documented um khabib. khabib all all those times in the mountains and he got the infamous shot of connor throwing the dolly at the bus that was will's footage that, i didn't know that that the ufc would not have gotten none of their embedded guys were in the bus rolling he was the one that got everyone scared in the bus he got the frame of connor that they froze you know of him throwing it yeah that was him holy smoke so he has a whole side he'll tell you that story but yeah, there's a lot of politics involved with with that footage. Yeah, I was looking at what you do and and all that, and I was like, I was telling my wife, I'm like, God, it would be cool. Like, how cool would it be to have both of them on the show at the same time, and then maybe we could all do something together. I'd love to, man. I love to. I mean, wh what is your take on mixed martial arts as a whole now? There's like, and, and I say that because I'm I'm learning. There's so much more to the fight game than just UFC. First, for the longest time, obviously, I've, I know Bellator. Um, and now I'm tuning into like one and all that. Right. But this is, I try to remind myself, this is fight junkies. This is not true UFC junkies. True. Are you diving into all that stuff? Like, how are you keeping track of all this yeah. shit? And this is not easy. There's so much going on. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm not the guy who's watching all the fights in every country and knows everyone's stats and rankings, but I am kind of into this modern fight, you know, um, genre uh the jake paul the nate diaz you know and i do like how guys are now a little flexible to like show up in other places you know i grew up watching wwf now e same so like i like the characters i like that someone could disappear and then they come back you weren't expecting it or some guy from another company comes in and makes a splash so i see it as it's it's good for all the fighters right now that there's all these opportunities and it's good for all the creatives like myself, like you, who are, are able to find their way into the picture and contribute to the overall business of what we're doing. You know, we're, we're putting on a violent show and we're charging people money to see it. You know, you, you take care of the violence and we'll take care of the creative. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's certainly an art to make people go wow in yeah. their living room. Yeah. And fighting is one of the few things in the whole world the only thing that I can relate to fighting that everyone ha like tunes into is going to the bathroom. I don't care what color you are, where you're from, what that language, too. everybody takes a shit and everybody likes watching a fight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a friend, Salim, rest in peace, but he worked in uh, like import exports and he told me, I buy containers of toilet paper. You know why? Because everyone shits. Everybody. Everybody shits. I wanted to have, I wanted to make a, so when I was going to school, I was doing Uber on the side in California, in SF. And what Uber doesn't know is that the Uber drivers have nowhere to go to the bathroom. Mm. So how good would it be if you didn't steal my idea and we made an app that we contracted with all the bathrooms and everybody paid a small subscription and then everybody has a clean bathroom to go to? Everybody or just Uber drivers? I would start with probably like Uber, Lyft, all of like, right. you know, but then obviously you got moms that are you know, uh, coming home with their kids, uh, walking in the city, and they right. need a safe bathroom. Uh, not just my, everybody. Right. I mean, how many times have you needed a bathroom? 
So, I mean, that's way off topic, but that's hey, something I was thinking I'm about. Man. I'm in. You let me know. Yeah. I mean, we could all retire off of uh, <laughs> the Go Potty app. That's yeah. my app. Don't steal there it. We go. set it here on record on Fight Junkies. That's my idea. Uh, so where are you at now? Um, not, I don't mean just, you know, geographically, but like in your career, what, what what's motivating you now? What's like the, how, how old are you? I'm 35. Okay. my I'm 37. Right so we're at that like. Yeah. We're almost to the point where we got to keep doing what we're doing to make it work. Otherwise, we're going to be 50 no, at a gas station. That's like, exactly yeah. true. Um, yeah, I, I'm still excited about combat sports. You know, that kind of the last question about the the scene right now. Um, I, I think it's open for opportunities, you know. Um, I did just uh, get to direct Tito Rampage and uh, Frank Mir in a reality pilot called American Made MMA. And we got to go to a few states and look for like uh, young talent, and uh, that's what that was. Okay, so we spoke about it earlier, but right. I had seen your content, some posts, and I'm like, man, this guy's like, you're in the rooms. I want to be a fly on the wall in, you know. And I'm so I, but obviously, I don't think it's been published yet, right? Yeah. Well, the the promotion kind of rebranded it, created their own thing, and and it's running strong on their platform. Okay. So what I have to show you later is like a secret never before seen director's cut of like my vision of the project. That's awesome. And uh, it was kind of like uh, Undercover Boss meets American Idol. Like uh, we show up at a gym nobody really knows other than coaches. So you might have a class of like 20 dudes who are all trying to be MMA fighters. And all of a sudden, they're looking at Tito Rampage and Frank Mir. And, and they say, who wants to show us what they got? And, you know, if you do good, you could get a contract with this promotion. So uh, it was a lot of fun. And what, what has been the coolest part is now that we're like six months removed, I get to see the, the people that I met and see where they're at now. You know, and, and one of the guys was Anthony Taylor. I don't know. If, if you know him from Misfits, he's a dude that socked uh, Dylan Dennis in the parking lot. I do know. I've had over PJ on the show PJ, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Happy Punch. Right, right, yeah. right. So uh, it, it's been cool to see these guys and, and where they're at and, and just kind of knowing that, like, had I put my money down on certain guys that I thought were the guy, like, probably would have paid off, you know? I lost a $5,800 payout last oh. pay-per-view. Uh, For O'Malley? Yeah, I did a parlay, straight win, lose. Five fights, got four out of five. Bet bet on Weidman, and Weidman oh, lost yeah, TKO, yeah. and I lost five hundred bucks. Oh. I was fucking pissed. So is Cheeto going to get the the fight? I do believe. That's a good question, right? So let's dive into the the bantamweight division. Did you think it was gonna? And I and I say this because I was torn. That's why when I did a five fight parlay, the main event wasn't on it. Right, because I was like, if we look at the current, you know, accolades of the champ, he's besides Cruz, like the goat of the bantamweight division with his wrestling. I, with my experience and knowledge of mixed martial arts, without a doubt, was very scared for O'Malley because of the takedowns and just the the backpack of Sterling. But I also felt. And Alexander Volkanovsky said it. Sometimes when it's your time, it's just your fucking time. Yeah. So I also felt like it was O'Malley's time. But I wasn't confident enough to bet. And I should have because I wanted I, I love the, the O'Malley factor um, because it brings a lot of this. Yeah. The feelings of this guy back. Yeah. But I, I didn't know. So how do you think that fight was going to play out? And then how do you think it should go? Because obviously... As we know with Connor, shout out to Con Connor McGregor sharing my shout shit yesterday. Out. Let's go. Um, that yeah, that's that's a good question for you because I know you're gonna put some because I know you're a real fan. The current state of all mixed martial arts with rankings versus celebrity mm. and and did, how do you think the main event was gonna go? Uh, you know, like I'm not the guy giving my picks. You know. Uh, I kind of always go with my heart or who's my guy because I might have worked with them, you know, or I might know their coach. So, uh, but one thing uh, Tito told me back when I was like, hey, how, how do you beat Khabib? How does someone beat Khabib? You know, he says, someone wrestles that good, there's only one way to beat them. You take their head off. You know, before they could touch you, you got to take their head off. 
and and that's what Sean did. You know, the first round was was pretty slow, and I know they're feeling themselves, you know, feeling feeling out the 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 fight. But um, as soon as he let it fly, you know, he took his head off, and Aljo couldn't. I know it was a little. Uh, Maybe early stoppage. Did you think so? Yeah, a little bit. For a title fight. For a title fight. And then being also that I've seen guys get like smashed in the face with elbows and they're not moving and they don't stop it. You know, they let like three or four of them land. Is like Aljo was still scrambling, you know, but you can't let yourself even get in that position, you know. And I did see a good post that made sense. The, the little dude with the green hair that Sean fought. A while ago. Oh, that he punched like 900 <sighs> times in the head. Right? Like, that dude what took a ton of damage. They could have stopped that. They could have stopped that way Early before. in the yeah, second, yeah. Yeah, so if he could have handled it, then the champ should have handled it better. And look at Frankie Edgar back in his day. I think he got right. knocked out and got back up five right. times well, in one fight. <laughs> all, all the guys from back in the day all say the same thing. You know, back in my day, you know, and, and it's true, like... The, the sport was very different. Guys were fighting with shoes. Guys were fighting multiple times a night. No uh, no weight class. No no USADA. No, the, yeah, the, no the, USADA. Was there a commission even back then? They, I, they there was, just, but it was not regulated much. Yeah, they're just trying to get the fight allowed to even go down. You know, there wasn't specific rules and protection of anything. That's when I started watching back in the day. Because I was a huge, you know, WWF fan. That's right. why when I had Hulk Hogan's nephew on, uh, I was like super stoked just to be that close to Horace. Hulk. Was it Hor was uh, it nephew? David. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, so his uh, Hulk Hogan's oldest brother that passed away, okay. he raised the son. Uh, so that, I got to check that out. Yeah, yeah. He just fought um, last weekend. Uh, unfortunately, he got KO'd. But he was five and zero. Oh, but he's forty two. Oh wow! We were trying to get him into the contender series. Right. Yeah, I was in the back of the uh, the apex in the little happy dad area talking with some of the some managers and people that I know back there. I won't say names, and uh, we were really pushing to get him on the contender series. It still could happen. You never yeah, know. You never know. But I think that because they had a forty year old a couple seasons ago go in and get just molly whopped at Sean Shelby and them. Like right. he actually was going to the Ultimate Fighter this last one. And the day before he went to the house, um, they nixed it. But he doesn't. He doesn't go by Hogan. His last name? No, he goes by King David MMA. Uh. And his no, he, no, it, it's not Hogan. He changes right. it. I don't think so. You got to lean don't into it, choke man. Me that's, out. I'm that, not sure. That's always my advice to to not be afraid of what you might think you don't want to lean on. Is sometimes what you got to lean into. Yeah. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah, you, know. you got to lean into what you're good at. And and that's why I love doing this so much. When I say that, like, my ex-wife and, like, people I grew up with, like, used to literally make fun of me and be like, yo, you talk too much, Bobby. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, you... Joke's on you. Because <laughs> now you're watching me talk. Subscribe, like, and share, please. Um, you got, this is my gift, you know, and I, I finally have a place to use it. And it just so happens to be in a sport that I follow and love yeah. and was my passion so it, it was a perfect mixture but i never sought it out like they say like oh people are looking for relationships and i want that true love and they're like it'll let it just find you you know and it's true this just found me my wife and i i had got divorced moved to california i was like i'm not getting married ever again and then i met her and was like oh maybe i'm falling in love already son of a gun <laughs> so sometimes things are just meant to be but you got to lean into it yeah uh, that's why I like the show because we talk about awkward. It's like a therapy session every show. Dude. Yeah. Um, so, what is your take on more famous people getting different things? Like, I'm kind of torn because sometimes I want the the real number one contender right. to get the spot. And I bring that up because we said is Cheeto right, going to get? Cheeto. I would say that Sanhagen is probably next, but he's also out with an injury. You know, so. Right. Not just that division. How do you feel about like famous people getting yeah, a shot? I mean, it, uh, it's called ATM, attention to monetization. You know, so you could be ranked number two, but if number five has more followers and people know him and he's been on reality shows, then I mean, this is a business. Who are you going to put? You know, to to sell tickets. Same. Yeah, I'm yeah. putting the. So in in my book, uh, Cheeto's going to haunt. Sean the rest of his life if he don't run it back you know 
So whether it happens first, uh, you know, or, or next, it's going to happen. And uh, Cheeto's a friend of mine. I, I shot, uh, I documented his fight camp for the first Sean O'Malley fight. And uh, I know he has some, some things in the tank that didn't get used. So, you know, I'm excited to see that get ran back and, and see what happens. I watched his documentary. It was like a short 30 uh -huh. minute one or something. And I was just in tears in my living room. Yeah. Like good, happy tears. Like this guy, what he's done and sacrificed for his family and his children. Yeah. It's people don't see that. They just see the press conferences. They see all the, the bright lights, but they don't see the, the tears and the pain and the injuries and the sweat and the time away from family. And that's 98% of it, yeah. you know, and, and that you probably have such good relationships because you get to see that. I have a friend, um, I went to high school with him. I won't, I won't even say friend, more of an acquaintance, but we went, we grew up in the same town. His name is uh, Mark Coleman. Okay. He's a camera guy. Mark Coleman. He does a lot of, I mean, Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje. Oh, okay. Um, I, I wasn't sure if you guys knew each other because it's yeah. a small community, All right? All camera guys know each other. Yeah. We just have a sign, hand sign that we throw at each other. Yeah, it sounds like the Masons. Uh, <laughs> What do you uh, think about, actually, tomorrow morning, uh, Singapore's going down. Uh, UFC's in, at 08 tomorrow morning, I guess, because of the time difference. What do you think about, and I got to ask, I brought him up a few times, uh, not even just Connor, the, the lightweight division. How do you, have, have you been following the lightweight division? It feels like it's a merry-go-round of the same people. I'm, I'm more of a heavyweight guy myself. You know, you can follow me, super heavy Chris, you know. Let's go. I, I let the lightweight guys do their thing. I stay on this side. How do you... Well, let's get into that. There's a lot going on in the heavyweight division. I mean, arguably... The, not even arguably. I don't think it's an argument. The GOAT is coming back to fight the most... The winningest heavyweight champ ever, Stipe Miocic. John Jones and Stipe. I, I want to believe that... I mean, there's part of me thinks like, damn, what John Jones just did to Cyril Gaon. But Cyril Gaon's a striker. He's not a wrestler. I don't know how that goes because I, I mean, Stipe took hits from Francis. How, yeah. how do you think that may may go down? I mean, John's the goat, right? Yeah, it's kind of hard to go against him. Yeah, that's you know, true. he's he's actively. This is all he does. You know, he's not a firefighter. He's not splitting time. You know, he's he's focused on on what he's after. You know, so my money would be with John. Yeah, yeah. I'd be, it'd be kind of hard to go against yeah, John. Yeah, it's harder to go against them. But then again, like, I'm not that guy who's going to give the pick and be yeah, like, yeah. you know, this is why, because, you know. Uh, no, but you, but we all started this as, as being fans. So right. like, And that's why I love this sport so much. Because I some of these people that I, you know, fighters, I'll bet. Uh, I don't really bet a lot. That one bet, you know, uh, was pretty big, but it was a friend of mine and me. So shout out to losing some of your money, my bad. <laughs> but this is such a good sport. Where uh, I I hope people don't take it offensively if you're like ah, I don't think so. Me as like a you know a content creator in the fight space, I, I never want to like I'm never bashing somebody, but right. I'm going to be honest. You know what I mean? Um, have you looked at uh, Have you done anything with any of the bare knuckle guys? I haven't yet, but uh, I've talked to Ken Shamrock about his bare knuckle uh, company, and then there's a, there's a few in Florida that I'm I'm interested in working with. I, I talked with. Uh, David, what Feldman? David Feldman, yeah. yeah, from BKFC. Yep. So uh, I know Mike Perry's down there, and I, I like his style. So I'd love to, you know, work with any of those guys. It's a whole nother beast, though. You know, I, I, I'm sure being up front for that is intense. Is, yeah, even a level above what MMA is. Uh, Feldman is super cool. Yeah, I was at the is. press conference for the Perry Rockhold right. fight. I was at the. Uh, they did a small private presser with just uh, media at the Palms. Right. And I kind of just snuck in wearing a suit and was like, <laughs> I'm pressed. And they let there me in go. and uh, got to Confidence meet, meet will them. get you a long way, man. Act like you own the place and just fucking walk right in. Yeah, I just figured out. I found out where it was and I just showed up and I got to meet, meet Chell Sonnen. Shout out to, oh, to Chell. Have you worked with Chell at all? I haven't worked with Chell. I've, I've crossed paths with him uh, on the internet a bit because when I was doing my thing with Tito... He went out and kind of did a whole episode bashing my my hard work. But shout out to Chael because he did say, 
it looks great. Tito hired a bunch of guys, got a bunch of gear, and it wasn't a bunch of guys. It was just me. It was just my camera. So uh, shout out to Chael. If he wants to ever exchange some Tito stories, he could call me personally, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool, right? Yeah, I met him. He was uh, he was kind of in character the yeah. whole time because he was hired by BKFC to right. go out there and help. Well, he's the best man. I mean, no one could sit alone in front of a camera and talk as well as him. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's he's either just the best in the world or a complete psychopath. <laughs> but he gets it. He really gets it, and he'll lay down game for people about like how to build a character and like heel versus baby face, like. <clears throat> Everyone could pretend that WWF and pro wrestling is like completely has nothing to do with MMA and vice versa, but they're like cousins, you know, and, and the way to build a fighter in UFC is exactly the way you build a superstar in WWE. So uh, Chael gets it. And, and if you're a fighter, listen to his pod and pick apart what he's saying, because he really knows how to build a brand and something that people could connect with. He says it all the time, like punches and kicking is only so much of the game. You know, how come some of these guys could lose fights and then, you know, their stock doesn't really drop because they're connected in a way beyond just being a tattooed, bald fighter dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Diaz, Cowboy Cerrone. All these guys. Uh, the, people will line up just to get their autograph somewhere at a, at a weed shop or a whatever, you know, for the rest of their lives, they're gonna do that, you know, because they've done more than just show up and fight that's uh, i'm not making light of fighting and winning i know that's a huge part of it but there's like a little more work to do and that's why these new guys who understand oh, i need a podcast i need to drop my merch i need a hoodie every time i fight you know you can make 40 50 grand off, off dropping hoodies even if you don't get your fight bonus you know that is what I think a lot of fighters miss. And, and I won't even blame them. A lot of people are young and they're real focused on the win. But the media machine that the UFC yeah. is and some of these other promotions, they're literally putting you in front of millions of people. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is take the steps that everybody else showed you to take. And then you can just get way up here and right. then really focus and hone up on your craft because you won't be worrying about paying the mortgage. Yeah, that I, I think that's a great thing to tell people. Chael Sonnen certainly, I watch a lot of podcasts, but I will go there, especially when like fights are coming up and I want to get like a really good, like mm. detailed, like non-biased analysis right. of the fight based on like real world experience and not just some, cause I mean, we can talk about that. Um, I feel like we're way oversaturated and I know I'm just adding to it as a new podcast, but I try to be different where like you guys will see me with the fighters. You'll see me, you know, in the octagon, you'll see me at the apex and see and Steve will do it and all these people. I trying to be like actually in it, but man, Instagram has millions and, and, and no disrespect to anybody, do your thing, but millions of like just meme fight pages. Yeah. And I feel like it's, I don't know. I, I feel the same way. I mean, there's creators who do awesome stuff. It looks beautiful. But it's like it's just cars or it's just girls or it's just food or and I'm like, where's the business? Like, have you, you know, have you progressed your family's life or are you just like a 21 year old dude just like having fun, you know, and they got millions of followers and traffic and everything. But, um, you know, I kind of separate myself from that. That's why, like you said, if you go to my page, it's just my family and stuff. I have a business page for my business and family for family. But, you know, I focus on creating the stuff that people want to watch, not just watch me, you know. And, I mean, you're by far on your way, man. I mean, I see you rubbing elbows with everybody, and you have great, uh, you know, rapport with people. So I'm sure you're off to the races, man. I appreciate that. Just don't do the eating food while you interview people, because I don't know when that became cool with, like, the food truck diaries and stuff, but oh, like like uh, eating chicken wings like, while like you're Brandon Schaub. Yeah, man. Like I don't. Yeah, think that any, is fair. I don't new. think anybody likes that. I know, know? Uh, some of the known jumper guys were doing that. And yeah, I don't really like food. Yeah, I mean, I ate a peanut butter and jelly before I came here. But you know, I, like Brad Pitt <laughs> eats food while he's acting, like that's his thing. Yeah, you know? but that's Brad Pitt. You know, let's let's save that. I'd let him, him eat my arm. You yeah. know, so yeah. What do you think? Because you've been in the, not just the world, but you're, you know, you're 35, 
your 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 dad, your family man. You're you're a man. You've traveled. You've done so much. What do you think? And I say this that your age because we're like the same age. So we've seen it go from like having a beeper and then a Nextel and then a flip phone yeah. and then playing like the snake game to where we're at now. I feel like it's not just oversaturated, but everybody's trying to do the same exact shit. That's why I try to go to the strip and do like funny interviews. And yeah. But I'm still trying to figure out how to separate myself. What do you think like young content creators that want to be, you know, in the rooms that you're in, like how do they get their self out there? Because mm. it's... I feel like everyone's doing the same thing and i know something's gonna pop i don't know what it is but we're gonna go oh shit why didn't i think about that and then everyone's gonna start doing that and yeah it's, i just don't know what it is i mean i went to film school in the late 2000s because i wanted to be a filmmaker you know and uh over time i even feel like that changed like you know who, who's like the dopest filmmaker that's like under 40 you know like i i don't know you know what i mean like it it's not as cool of a thing but then who's logan paul who's jake paul who's these guys oh, everybody knows them you know so i was in this weird period where it was like it kind of transitioned from wanting to work in film and television to wanting to be a content creator and a youtuber so uh i know how that feels to kind of watch stuff change um and then now that i'm a little older i feel myself coming full circle again and being like well while all these kids are on YouTube, I'm gonna go make a movie. You know, now that I got some like famous friends, some rich friends, you know, let's let's put all that together again. And and now I feel like I have more to say, you know, and I kind of understand even what a movie is, like why you go to a movie and what you get out of a movie versus what you get out of just scrolling and watching YouTube, you know. So I am still trying to find myself as a creative, you know, and my spot in the world, but along the way, you know, you, you figure out what you're good at and that usually connects with what you're good at helping other people with because that's where you find your value. So like anyone could shoot cool, you know, workout footage of a fighter. But when I reached out to Tito, I was like, you know, you get a lot of shit, you know, people give you shit for you, you messed up on a word or, you know, whatever. It's like, but that's because you don't control the edit because like you have no power over what gets put out they're fucking cutting weight you know what i mean they haven't eaten in weeks and then they're talking to like hundreds of people you know so you're going to trip over your words you're going to you know and so that was the value that i brought was that i understood that we need to control the narrative you know uh he fought with oscar de la hoya you know the the Chuck Liddell fight was under Golden Boy, and it's like so they control the narrative. And I feel you know? like, and uh, you know, that they got a lot of crap for that. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like as a fighter, you're like a movie star that has nothing to, no control over the movie. You're not picking your roles. You're not picking. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of how I approach fighters. Like, you know, what are we trying to cover up? You know, what are we trying to? show the best light of, you know, are you, are you a former champion that we're trying to make everyone remember who you are? Are you the new guy that, you know, we're trying to show your family and show people why they should invest in you? Are you that flashy guy who we're just trying to ball out and, you know, help you out by renting some cars and some, you know, extra glitz and glamor, you know, it, it's show business, you know? So if you don't add that element to what you're doing, you're just another guy trying to scrap you know do you think that's what sean o'malley's been very good at oh yeah yeah he took a page from connor and you know i i was a fan of sean from the beginning until i met cheeto and then it was like oh well i gotta ride with my guy now i love cheeto yeah but uh you know he's great for the sport you could see action figures you could see them selling the 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 hair right uh, they're do they already sell the hair when he oh fights? yeah the whole they I, sell I heard at, all of boston was just People yeah. wearing wigs. I don't know if it was. That's what I'm saying. They need to sell the hair, the like, like UFC endorsed, you know, branded curly uh, candy top hair. You they, know, they might. Yeah. Yeah. That like, would... like Tito had the beanie, right? <laughs> like that. Is that not one of the first like gimmick branded pieces of like MMA history? You know, but he still sells those beanies. He still sells the flame shorts. What know? happened to all, like all the clothes that we wore back then? Like those brands, Ugh. they just fell off. Yeah. Like um, 
Man, what were some of the brands? They like they were like. My mom shopped at Mervin's, so. No, that I mean the fighters wore like we <laughs> like all those brands are gone now. Oh, uh, oh tap out, tap me- out, metal militia. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. What those just went? They're, they're somewhere, gone. somewhere, right? Someone needs to buy them up and and spruce up the brand. Have you been to the Las Vegas fight store? I haven't, but I like that's where that's, I took the picture with the the knockoff uh, Jorge Masvidal with the BMF belt. Right, right, right. It's I'll explain. It's at the end of the strip. There's it's like an indoor. It says outlets, but it's you know a mall. those guys there at that store. I've got, I've talked to them. We need barely. To, we need to set up some signings there. Bring some fighters, do some signings. Let's. let's that, it let's seems connect. like a perfect spot to do that kind of thing. See, see, that's the business that I don't know about. Yeah, I had a, I drove a guy who was a music producer, one of the first to get E40 in Florida to sell out like an arena. And he was telling me like, how come you don't, you know, hit up clubs and dispensaries and all? And I said, it's not that I haven't thought about it, but I, I, I don't want to be that guy. I'm so new in the space. Mm. Like, let me get some time and like relationships under my belt. You know what I mean? That's different. Hitting up another businessman. You have the relationships. Right. You know, you guys could. Pro- I'll connect you guys. Oh, but you like, mean like networking with the fighters that you meet? Yeah, I don't to- want to like just have somebody on the show and be like, "Hey, you want to come?" To, right. Like, I'm not that guy. Yeah, yeah. I want to be at the barbecue. You know what right. I mean? And and those can go hand in hand because I never thought of myself as that guy either. You know, I always only wanted to do camera work don't even talk to me you know i would have never done stuff like this but along the way you know you start realizing like if i'm just a camera guy then that's just what i am i can't now go into a room and talk to dana on some other shit because he just sees me as that so i mean i want to do a bunch of different things but i'm so new right that i know that if i was a a fighter and there's this guy just met like i know people and I don't want to put off that vibe. Maybe in a few years, when people know, like, Bobby's a genuinely nice guy, and he he just is doing this to help, you know, um, then, yeah, absolutely, I want to do a bunch of different, like, avenues. But yeah, but well, that's op- things I got to think about. Opportunities are going to come to you, you know, for you to spread out more than just hosting, you know. Yeah, I, want, I really um, want to start going, excuse me, to, to more fights. Mm. Um, but we have, you know, an eight-month-old, so... I haven't wanted to, you know, we just moved out here. My, we don't have many friends out here. Right. We got a small circle, but I don't want to just be like, hey, sweetheart, I'm going to, you know. Right. I want to give it some time. And, and this is where I could do the best. This is, like you said, this is Hollywood. Right. And literally. It's the like, capital of the world. And they're building yeah. fucking $350 million worth of studios they are, in huh? Summerlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I watch the news in the morning because um, I'm an old man. <laughs> I get up, drink my coffee, watch the news, and watch the sun come up. But I learn a lot about Vegas, and they talk a lot about like the baseball stadium that might be coming, right. like a, a, another basketball team, that an expansion team, and Hollywood building all this stuff. And it's interesting to see that this is turning into like L.A. in like the '80s yeah. and '70s. Yeah. So you're in. Where are you at right now? I'm in the high desert, but I've lived in L.A. before. I grew up in Southern California my whole life, so I, I used to. I grew up around 40 minutes from L.A. I have family uh, I used to visit every summer for like the whole summer in Santa Clarita. Yeah. Um, what's Do you see a big difference right now in California, like in, in the, the creator space and like Hollywood I, space? I think what I, what I feel is even in doing some of the traveling I've done with Tito and I got to check out like Florida, got to check out Texas, you see that like L.A. isn't the only spot in the world. You know, like there's cool places everywhere. You could get a bigger house almost everywhere else. You know, whatever you're into, there's a community for that. You know, if you're creative and you shoot weddings, you could go anywhere and shoot weddings, you know? So it is really congested in LA with everyone trying to do anything cool, you know? So there's a a ton of camera guys. There's a ton of everything. And, you know, uh, Everything isn't bright and new and shiny. Like people who've never been to Hollywood before, you probably go to Hollywood and you're maybe oh my it's God. not exactly what you imagine, you know? So if you tell me they're building a bunch of new, brand new studios out here and there's new housing out here, chances are you might have a better experience, you know? You don't need to be in LA to be in whatever scene you want to be in anymore. Yeah, that was 
I mean, our whole life, everything went down there. I, I still remember watching OJ driving the Bronco. Yeah. Shout out to OJ. I saw you at the. <laughs> I saw him. He winked at me at the golf course. You mean you saw you saw him on the news? I you, saw him on the news as a kid. Yeah, he didn't drive by you. No, he yeah. drove by me on a golf cart oh, okay. a few months ago and winked at me. And I was wow. like, I don't even know how I feel right now. I felt nervous. <laughs> I wanted to call my dad. Um, yeah, I really had no idea. I'm like, is that fucking OJ Simpson? And he was like, Yeah. And he, he winked knew, at me. He felt you talking Ooh. about him. Yeah. Come on, fight junkies. There you go. <laughs> But I remember L.A., like, I remember seeing him driving in, like, California in the palm trees on the highway. That was huge. Anything that happened in, I mean, the remember Three Ninjas? Yeah. That was in California. Shout out to Three Ninjas. Yeah, what a dope show. <laughs> oh, my God. If you don't know Three Ninjas, you're probably just too young. But, uh, but look up Three Ninjas. And not the newer one. It has to be, like, 94 or you, sooner. You're talking about the sequel, Three Ninjas? Yeah, I haven't even seen it. Yeah. I have Just a... The first one, Rocky loves Emily. That's yeah. that's the only one that exists. Those okay, the so days. so I'm gonna circle back to Three Ninjas right now. Yeah, please. So I said I used to watch Power Rangers. Do you remember Power Rangers at all? Yeah. Okay, so around season three, they start changing up the cast and they bring in this little kid. He's a little boy, and he becomes the new Blue Ranger. So when he morphs, he gets big and he's an adult now and fights crime. <clears throat> so that's when I bounce from the show i was like this kid got a little joey lawrence haircut not my not my style so uh flash forward you know 20 years or whatever i meet this guy blake foster and he's that kid you know that was him and he's grown up now yoke dude all tatted up and never stopped doing karate and stuff so he's like a fourth degree black belt and he's like yeah i want to get into mma so uh I, I had just been doing my thing with Tito, so I was like, dude, let's create you a show, you know? And uh, on his season, they would say, uh, shift into turbo. So I was like, we'll call it shifted, you know? And it's your story of shifting from child star to MMA fighter. And the guy he ended up fighting was another kid actor who was one of the three ninjas in the, in the Hulk Hogan uh, uh, sequel to Three Ninjas. So uh, I documented this guy's training, and it was pretty... Pretty cool. He had a smooth transition and I got a first round knockout in Utah and uh, it was pretty awesome. The crowd was all Power Ranger people. You picked your, because the kid, the other guy was also a Power Ranger actor at one time. So it was like, pick your Ranger, pick your side, you know. That is the coolest shit I've heard cool. all month. <laughs> yeah. So shifted, check it out with Blake Foster. Bro, that is, that is so cool, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, we grew up on that. It yeah. was like DuckTales, Power Rangers. Yeah. I oh remember even goodness. even Connor, when he was talking shit to Mayweather, he was like, Voltron, Power Rangers, you know, with his security team and stuff. Yeah. I was yep. like, yeah, even McGregor's a Power Ranger. Yeah, man. yeah. Have you... Um, no, I think it was opposite. I think it might have been Mayweather saying that. Yeah. Have you done work with Mayweather? Or, or do, you, do you ever dive, delve into boxing at all? Uh, I would love to get into boxing. Uh, I haven't yet much, so uh, no, I don't know Floyd or any of those folks. But it would be pretty seamless for you in yeah. a lot of ways, right? Yeah, you know, my my dad, uh, his father was a professional boxer in Oakland, and uh, he worked with uh, Dick Sadler, who was George Foreman's uh, trainer. So back in the day, my grandfather would like host like uh, fundraisers for the local boxing club and. George Foreman would come and eat at my dad's house. And there's a legend of him eating like trays of enchiladas. You know, my dad was like a poor kid. So it was like George probably ate a month's worth of, you know, food of the family. But it was like, that's for George. That's know? so sick. Yeah. So growing up, like I was into Power Rangers and stuff. And my dad was watching like cops and, and boxing and Jerry Springer. So it's like I kind of grew up with this like, even though I was a, you know, coddled little creative kid, the only thing I saw my dad getting excited about was like rowdy stuff, yeah. you know? So he wouldn't play catch with me and stuff, but I remember him telling me, this is what a face off is. And you got to scare this guy right at the face off, you know? And usually the guy who wins the face off wins the fight, you know? And he used to tell me, show me your, your face off face, you know? And I've never had a fight, you know, I've never, boxed or anything like that 
but somehow it kind of stuck with me. And then like, as I got into film, it was like, look, dad, Rocky's on. He's like, fuck Rocky. That's not, that's not real. That's <laughs> not real, son. That's not, I was like, don't you like boxing? He's like, that's not boxing. You know? you know, I just had this conversation yesterday with my, uh, my wife, very similar to what you just said. My dad's from Brooklyn, New York. Right I got raised, he was military, wow. police, tough dude, single dad raised us. And I remember him saying like, especially during like baseball, like if I got, if I missed the pitch and I, he would say, don't get sad, get mad. <laughs> and I, and I just had that. I just told my wife about that last night. I think I've told her before, but I get it. it our dads were just that era. It was yeah. like, cause he was like fighting people on the subway, you know, in New York city in the eighties as a cop. And like, he's a wild man to this day. Like you'll see, he's, he'd come in here and have more energy than anyone in this whole studio. Yeah, my dad used to watch cops like how other dads watch sports, and he'd break it down. He'd be like, so what did he do wrong here, son? I was like, I don't know. He had drugs and a gun in the car? He's like, no, expired tags. If he had his tags straight, they would have never pulled him over. See that, son? You got to take care of... Keep your shit straight. Base layer. (laughs) Take care of the base layer, then you're good. That's what I did in the military. I I always said, no matter what happens, I'm going to show up looking better than everybody else so that they mess with all the other privates and not me. Yeah. And then when I became a, a squad leader, I used to have one extra soldier per shift. And I would say whoever, you know, looks the best in inspection gets to go home. And if you look the best all month, you're not working all month. And they would show up with, you know, some positive reinforcement to, to look good. And yeah. it was just something that stuck with me, I guess. That was the, that was the era, one of the last eras of real men. <laughs> Us too. The yeah. world's crazy. Speaking of crazy, before we get out of here, sure. there's a lot of fights coming up in that content creator space. Uh-huh. Um, Dylan Dennis is going to face off with Logan Paul. Right. KSI is going to throw down with Tommy Fury, which I'm really torn on who should be the main event in that. Right. Because I think that Dylan Dennis and Logan should be their own main event. Yeah. How, how do you feel about all that? I know you've said that, obviously, you like it. We both agree that that's good for the community, for, for yeah. our content creators. Um, can you talk about how, because you've been around the sports along, that shit, for a lot of you, that's all you know. COVID hit, you see YouTubers boxing and fighting and talking shit to real fighters. In our era, in <laughs> 99, 98, early 2000s, you never said a word to a real fighter because you had respect and it just kind of... Yeah. What That's what's wild, man. That's what's wild is I see these like YouTube pages dedicated to like making fun of fighters who could whoop their ass like one hand behind their back. Um, I wish in high school I knew you could make fun of a big tough guy for not reading well. You know, like I didn't know that was like open, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. But we'll be able to got caught walking to the bus yeah. and beat the hell out of. Yeah. I didn't know you could just make fun of fighters for being dyslexic like. It just happens, you know. Yeah, what a... Hey, oh, you're a, a four-time champ, but you can't yeah, yeah. produce... You know, who yeah. gives a shit? Yeah, now some some guy on Twitch is over here, you know, making fun of a, a five-time fucking Hall of Famer. You it's know? crazy. Which, yeah. I what I do like to see in, like, some of the fighters... I know, uh, shout-out to Extreme Couture. They'll let some of the haters and yeah. shit-talkers come in and sign a waiver, and they'll yeah. get down. I just wish they would have watched when we were putting out the stuff on our page because, like, these these troll pages get, like, way more traction. They'll put on a, out a little clip, and it'll get a million views, you know? And, and what's weird, too, is I see on these troll pages, a lot of the trolls are fans. They, they, they're like, make more of this. We need more content from Tito, you know? And, and so they're, they're kind of a support system indirectly. You know, they want to laugh, but they're still supporting like the traction of his name, you know? How do you guys, how can I word this? <laughs> you make the content, you put the time in, <clears throat> you kiss your wife and kids goodbye, you go to work, you're putting all the effort in. How do you like battle the people that are just screen recording and like posting your shit? Like, is it just a thing that's going to happen regardless? Like, yeah, you patent know, your shit? How does that I work? I mean, I don't, I've never worked off of like making my money from views, you know, like me and Tito had our business arrangement, you know, if I got to bring in a sponsor, you know, cause this up and coming fighter doesn't have the funds to, you know, fuel a, a camp doc, 
then that's what we'll do, you know. But as far as like what happens once I put it out, you know, I kind of don't mind about that as much, you know. It's just a newer thing in the last like six months, I've seen a ton of it get like resurfaced because people are picking it apart for little things, you know, and it's, it's kind of flattering, I guess, you know, but uh, I'm like, you know, do, is there a way for us to claim a part of that? You know, because if you cover a, a song, if you're a musician and you cover a song, the algorithm does that work for the, the artist and they automatically get their cut. Yeah, on know? TikTok, you have to like click yes or no or right. something. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there's probably room for, you know, everybody who gets made fun of to get their share. That's probably something that's going to happen. I've um, done it. I mean, I, I'm guilty. Uh, I will certainly take some clips, but I'll try to give credit so that it could drive the, the people over to there. But yeah, I was just wondering because sometimes you make stuff like you deserve. Yeah. You deserve to have all of it. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you? I know we got only a couple minutes. Unfortunately, I could do this for it. We should have sure. cracked a happy dad and did this for two hours. Yeah. What, what's what's next for you? I certainly want to get you uh, out here when I talk to Will again. Um, I have no idea, but he promised me he'd come on, so I'm going to hold him to it. I'd like to get the three of us on that show. Where do you go from here? Like, Yeah, uh, I'm starting a, a business called The Baddest Media Firm, where we're basically uh, pairing athletes with uh, sponsors so that we could create our content and the, the cost isn't necessarily on these fighters. Um, but beyond that, I'd love to work with you know any promotion. Uh, I, I met Dana in Vegas last time I was here. Uh, Tito and Rampage and Frank were upstairs. I ran into Tito, uh, Dana uh, in Caesars. I told him uh, who I was, what I'm doing. He's like, you're with them three? Holy shit, man, good luck. He's like, good luck. Tell Tito I said, fuck you. And then uh, we had a good laugh. He's like, no, I love Tito. They, they love each other. Yeah, yeah. No matter what you see, Tito had way more good stories and like, you know, life lessons that he shared with me from his time with UFC than anything negative. Family fights. Yeah. So uh, obviously I'd love to work with Dana at the, the big show, you know, but uh, I know that under that there's a, a ton of awesome promotions. There's also a ton of like, I call them cosplay promoters, you know, they just have a cage and three letters and they do it on the weekend and they call themselves a, you know, a show. But uh, somebody that I know you're, you're friends with, friend of the show, Sean Merriman, yeah, has yeah. his Lights Out League. Yep. So shameless plug, I'll cut a promo right here if you don't mind, Sean, give me a call. We gotta, you know, make your own docu-series, sign them up, light them up, whatever you wanna call it. Give me a call, I know Tito's your boy. I used to see you uh, in the comments of our Uncaged show, so. You know, I'm a friend of the show here, so let's get to work. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, connect you guys. He's yeah, great. I, He's got a fight coming up. Uh, he supports your tomorrow. show. I see. I see everything you post. He supports it. So yeah. Like, you know, I, I I dig what he does because he's transferring all his knowledge of production. You know, he's he's not a fight expert, but he's an expert in camera and storytelling and product. You know, so. That's where I, not every promoter gets me excited. Not every company, like, do I see and I say, oh, I want to reach out to them. But I actually saw him on your show, and since then, I, I think that's the spot to be. Well, what day is today right now? I'm so messed up. Yeah, he has August a fight tomorrow. 20th. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, how far are you from there? I'm not far, but I have another shoot tomorrow. Okay. If I wasn't, I'd, I'd I would have hit him up. We'd get on the phone. We'd make it happen. Yeah, tonight. I'd get you some tickets. But next uh, fight, man, next fight. Let's let's make it happen. And we'll. Uh, Obviously, we'll, I got to get you out, out here for a contender series. Oh uh, man, I'd love that. I will. Uh, I'll work on a couple tickets. That sounds great. It was a pleasure having you, brother. Thank uh, you wish, so much. I man. wish we had more time. Next time. Yeah, we got. We do have a lot more time. Yeah, I'd love to hear more of your story too, man. Your your military story and your family story. Uh, that's why I'm going on another show right now. I'm going right to start on. building up and let people know who Bo who Bobby is. Definitely. Instead of just fight junkies, Definitely. you know what I mean. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate oh, you guys. Shout out Chris Martinez, a content creator. All you fighters, uh, go follow him. Check him out. He, he's tremendous behind the camera. He can paint a narrative that's going to just beautify you as a, as a human and as an athlete and, and build your brand. Um, someone who's been in the game for a long time, work with the, all of the absolute greats. So if you need somebody in your corner, uh, 
I'll put his information on the link below. Definitely. So Fight up. Junkies, appreciate you guys once again. Like, share, subscribe. Tell your neighbors, tell your grandma, tell your ex-girlfriend. Let's go. We're out. All right. Thank <laughs> you.